Okay, now I'm obviously on a Mac, but don't worry, you can follow along if you're on Windows or even Linux because it uses a HTML-based web page. So it's basically just a web page you use to uh, set this up. So don't worry. Now, the first step is actually to join its own network at first, not your normal one. So you go to network or whatever it's called on your platform, such as Windows. And here you have a drop down. It will be different if you're on Windows or Linux. But if you know how to connect to a Wi-Fi network on uh, your platform, then it's going to be fine. In fact, you might even be able to do this on a tablet. You connect just like you connect to your normal home network. You select the name. So if you normally it's a Joe Bloggs Wi-Fi network, you don't select that as usual. You select, you don't select your own. You select the one called Devilio Wi-Fi repeater. So we select that. Now we can't go anywhere else on the internet at the moment because it's using its own and that has no internet connection. It's just to set it up. Now we go to our web browser and we go to set this up just as if we're going to a web page except up here you type devlio the company name dot wi-fi not dot com not dot co dot uk but dot wi-fi and it should go here i have had at least on mac trouble where it won't find it using devlio dot wi-fi so in that case what you can do it's uh, you know Obviously, it's a bit of a workaround and stuff. You shouldn't really have to do it, and you probably won't. But if you have that little bit of trouble I do, don't worry. There is a workaround. What you do is you use a program on your computer. And if you haven't got one already, you'll have to get one, of course. But you can get uh, quite a few of free on all the platforms, Windows, Mac, or whatever, for scanning for local Wi-Fi networks. And that will tell you various devices are on your network. So here is IP scanner, which is available on the Mac. And we've hit scan and it's found any devices on your local network. So say you had Joe Blog's network, it would show all your devices, such as your tablets, your smartphones, your uh, TV box, things like that that are connected to the Wi-Fi. But in this case, because we're connected to the Divlio box, its own network at the moment, there is nothing else on it. It's not finding loads of smartphones, things like that which really makes this easier. It really cuts it down because that means that we only have the, our computer and the device. So that tells us that the device, if, and this will tell us actually that the manufacturer is Devlio AG, which really makes it obvious this is the right one. So that tells us the IP address is, in this case, that. So then we can go to our web browser and we can manually type the IP address in instead of devlio.wifi. So that is a workaround if you're having problems. Okay, you shouldn't need to do all of that. It should be straightforward. You should just connect to the Devlio network, then go to web browser, type in devlio.wifi, and you're here. That I'm just wanting you to know that in case you have issues. I want you to know the workaround. Now it's a basic web page. And you can change your language if you need, from English to whatever, French, German, various other ones. Now we simply have a drop-down, repeater mode, which is default, or AP mode. I've briefly told you uh, what AP mode means, but you can do your own research. I haven't been thorough, I've just given you a basic thing, because primarily you could be wanting booster or extender or repeater mode. In this case, it's called repeater mode. So we select that and hit next. Now, if we try to select AP mode, it will warn you, it will reboot the repeater. Now it'll take a minute. So I'm not actually going to do it. I'm going to show you that in a minute, but I'm going to uh, not bother rebooting that at the moment. I'm going to go straight into extender or repeater mode. We hit next. It'll scan for nearby 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks in your area, not just yours or the ones in the vicinity. Okay, once it's done that, and I have skipped ahead a little bit, but it didn't take too long. It only took about 30 seconds or so. It wasn't long. You'll get a list in two columns, 2.4 and 5. And as I mentioned, that is to do with being dual band, and there's several bands. Okay, now that's all the 2.4 in my area, not just mine. Uh, um, there's loads of neighbors and nearby businesses, things like that. And it tells you the security method they use or none the signal strength, 
Then on the 5 gigahertz band, it gives you the networks available, the security methods they use, and the strength, and of course the channel, because they use different channels, which I'm not going to get into in this. Now, one thing I want to point out, don't just select yours. Don't just hit there, or th there, or there, or there, or there, or whatever. Don't just select yours here, and hit next. That is fine if you only have one uh, band. If your home network, uh, what's coming from your modem or your router, is only 2.4, I guess that's all you do. You just select that and go. But you're, if you're using this device, the chances are you're going to be using a home network system that uses dual band and has the both band widths. So you select it on both. You select both columns. So say yours is this one. Say yours is this one here, you select it here. Then we say, okay, which one is the five gigahertz version? Okay, well, we think it's that one. Or if it was this one, we'd say, okay, there they are. There's my five and there's my four, uh, 2.4. And you select both. So make sure you select one for each of the bands unless you don't have the five gigahertz band if you know you don't have five don't select it only select the 2.4 but like i say you should probably have both otherwise you're wasting getting such a good extender here so we select both bands first we can say i want to have a new name from the repeated network which basically it's kind of similar to ap it does actually create a se separate network name as well so it's almost like uh, having two side by side but like i say that's not normally how people want to use the extenders normally you're going to want to have it basically extending your current one without a different name so i'm not going to do that i'm not just going to hit next then ask for a password. Now that is the password of your current network. This isn't a new password. This is the password from your current network. So whatever we just selected, what's its current password if it has one? Well, if it's one, two, three, or four, which it shouldn't be, but say it's one, two, three, four, we put one, two, three, four in here. So it's whatever our current network is, not what this extender is. So let's put in one. Then you click next and it verifies the connection and says, please wait. Okay, once you've done that, it'll say, congratulations, the connection was successfully established. The repeater is now integrated into your network. And then it gives you the name of your network and the name of the five gigahertz band if it's different or if it's the same, it'll say, just say the same thing. It'll tell you the password for each band, which if it was the same, then it will say the same thing. If it was different, it will give the different passwords. It's just a reminder, basically. It will have this at, at the moment. I don't know why it doesn't go away. It acts like it's still doing something, but don't worry, it is completely done. And there it is. There you go. It is now completely uh, set up as an extender, and you just connect to you. You forget you forget about the Devlio network now. You you don't you no longer connect to that. You now connect to that network, such as Joe Blog's network or whatever it's called. Uh, you connect just the same as you always did before. Before you use this, except for now, wherever your extender is, it should have a better range. In a minute, I'll just briefly, and I won't completely set it up. I'll just show you the uh, AP. But before I show you AP, what happens if we have extender set up like this and we want to change any settings? Well, there you can to a small degree. Well, we basically, once we're connected to our regular network as usual, if we want to change any settings or anything like that, we can go back to it. We either type in devlio.wifi or that may not work, in which case you just follow the little workaround I told you about finding the IP address, as I've done here. The IP address will be different because you're on a different network now. So this will then 
have a similar interface, but it will tell you the firmware version. Uh, at the time I'm making this, it's 1.0.3.2, although it doesn't say it there. And that is basically the code on the actual box, on the device itself, it's software, the code that's built into the actual machine. And you can update that. And it tells you the mode you're in, repeater mode. And we can actually switch over to AP mode here if we've changed our mind. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go to settings. We have a couple of settings here. Device LEDs on and off. Uh, they're on by default. And that's just a status strength indicator I've talked about before. And that can be turned off. Now cross beaming repeating is something that I'm going to turn on. And... This is something you may not have if you're looking at it yourself because you may have a version of this extender with slightly older firmware, in which case you only have this and this will be called something different. To get cross beam repeating, you have to update firmware, which I'll tell you about in one second. Once you've done that, you'll get cross beam repeating. This is basically means you can do your research yourself, uh, but just to be quick, basically what that does is instead of having the two bandwidths, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, kind of uh, almost separate, even if they're on the same network name, and your device basically switches back and forth between the two bands, it almost kind of, I believe it kind of merges them and it makes it a bit more faster and efficient. So I do recommend turning it on, but if you have any issues with it, turn it off but I have it on personally we can then reset the factory defaults as I've explained if you can't get to this inter interface and it's really wrong you can hold down the WPS button on the device for a little while with it plugged in with power of course hold it down for a while and it will reset as well but this is a uh, the better way of getting to it if you can now if we go to update firmware this won't find it and get it for you itself. As you can see, it tells you the version, but it hasn't told you there's a new one or there's not a new one. It's not that clever. What you do is you go to the website yourself, the product page on devlio.co.uk or .com, depending upon what country you're in. Okay, you locate the product page for this one, the Wi-Fi AC repeater on the Devlio product page. Hit Downloads. And it'll tell you if there's a newer version. Now, this isn't a newer version, even though it has a 0.2. I am using 3.2, 1.0.3.2, uh, which is this version. For some reason, the interface only gives the th first three digits, not the fourth, which is uh, something that perhaps you could update. But basically, if this said 1.1 or 1.0.4 or something and we had 1.0.3 like we do we'd know that this is newer because of uh, versions the digits are higher so we'd hit download then you might get a thing asking you to join the mailing list you don't have to do that you could just hit the x button that comes up and it'll download the file to your computer just one little file and it'll be called something you know obvious and it'll have the extension dot bin dot bin then you'd just go back to here, hit browse, and you browse just like browse in any file, like when you open a Word document, anything like that. You just hit browse, find the document, uh, find the file where it's downloaded to, probably in your downloads folder. Select it, hit open. Then you hit update and follow the instructions. Basically, there isn't much in the way instructions. It just says, are you sure? And you go ahead with it. Then you'll be updated. Then the next time you come here, any new options they've set up, any new uh features will be here such as this now let's take a quick look at ap mode even though it's not particularly what you're probably going to be using so ap mode next it will say configuration is complete reloading so basically that is rebooting restarting the device the uh, repeater Okay, and you may need to manually go back to this, you know, whichever method works for you to get back to this. And it will say the Wi-Fi name, uh, Wi-Fi network's name there. Then it will tell you the it's in AP mode or that you can switch to a repeater like you could before. Then we can go to network settings. Now this is where it gets different. There's a few more settings than we're used to in the repeater mode. We have DHCP client. 
or static, which is where you put in a static IP address and subnet mask and default gateway for it. Uh, this is beyond the scope of this review, so I'm not going to tell you what all that is and stuff because that is this type of stuff you probably either not need to know and you just stick with the default here of client and stuff or you're already going to be familiar with this if you've done work with uh, changing settings manually on routers you can also def you do use a defined uh, gateway then from LAN side DNS server so you can do from the router basically or enter one yourself such as uh, 8.8.8.8 8 .8 and then you can have another one here things like that but you just you know if you're not sure what you're doing just stick with a DHCP client from DHCP and the same there then you hit apply once you've changed your settings if you've changed any then we can go to Wi-Fi uh, settings and under wireless settings you can actually give it a, a different SID or network name from here. We can also change the authentication me uh, method. Now, basically, if you want this the same as your network, you can just leave this alone. But if you are kind of creating a separate network off of your current network, you might want to give this a completely different SSID here. You can also change the WPA type from WPA2 only or mixed of one and two, or only version one. And by default, it's on two only. I sometimes use that. And you can even manually give it a different channel. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, I would personally probably have it on auto. But why might you sometimes want to set a manual channel? That is because sometimes there are lots and lots of networks in your area, in your neighborhood, using the same one. So, for example, in the 5 gigahertz, quite often people use the number 100 a lot and it can kind of clash in a way. So you might want to find a channel which is a little less, a little less traffic on. But I would probably just stick with auto especially since some of these may not be available on the router that you're using with this repeater, your main router. For example, mine has on the 5 gigahertz band 100, and I know it's got 44 and maybe like 40 and maybe 36, but it doesn't have a lot of these others. Like I don't think it's got 52. I don't think it's got 110, 132, things like that. So you could select one that is not compatible with your router. So I would probably have these on auto. Then you hit apply here. Then we have settings. And that is basically just to turn off LED, uh, the LEDs. So it doesn't seem to be cross beaming with, oh, well, I suppose it won't be because it's not repeater mode. So that, that you don't have that there. Then you can reset factory default just like you could on repeater mode. And you can still update your firmware from here as well. You don't have to update your firmware here and on repeater. You do it on either one and it changes no matter which setting you, even if you change from repeater to A. AP, it's still got to be the same firmware, so you only have to do it once per new version update. Okay, so hopefully that was quite a long little tutorial of the interface. I want to show both modes and make sure you know what you're doing, especially if you have problems accessing the interface. But hopefully that has been useful for it to you, especially if you are somebody who is having a little trouble accessing this interface. I've hopefully shown you workarounds that you can figure out yourself to get to this. But once you have this set up, which you're probably going to be set up not as AP but as repeater, once you set up that up, the chances are you're never going to have to rechange any settings. Once you set up repeater mode, select your network you want and access it via the password. And then the only thing you might want to do then is occasionally if there's new firmware, update it, but is turn on the cross beam repeating or turn it off if you have problems. But apart from that, you're not going to be accessing this on a regular basis. You get it set up, you get your stuff turned on and turned off that you don't want, and you're good to go. And then you connect your, wife, your regular Wi-Fi as normal.